Now that we've been sending the coupled alloc and init messages a few times now, it must be noted that the second part, init, can actually be customized, hence the name custom initializers. We've seen this in our NS number class where we called init with int to initialize our object with a certain value. In the pirate assignment, we were able to use the method called init with objects for NS array. Where did that come from? Well, if we go to help, we can go to documentation API reference. I can type in NS array and look at the top hit. And if I scroll down, I can see that I have a bunch of custom initializers under the initializing an array section. One of these initializers is called init with objects. We can select that. And this provides a handy way for us to create and initialize an array with the objects already included, especially since we can't change an NS array since it's immutable. So let's go ahead and try using this method. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of my documentation. And we'll go to OW outer space uh, table view controller. And we're going to go up to the self.planets add object. And we can actually remove these. And what we can do is simply write one line of code here. And we're actually going to move the self.planets down below this. Because instead of just init here, we're going to write init with. And we can scroll down and we can find init with objects. And we can pass in planet one, comma, planet two, comma, planet three, and so on and so forth until we have all of our planets added. And once we do this, we'll be able to rerun our application and confirm that this array is still working properly. So let's go ahead and rerun. And now we see that we still have all of our planet names available to us. Notice how instead of setting the properties or characteristics of an object, after our init method, we can do it on one, well, two actually with alloc. Uh, and it saves us a bunch of time and lines of code. Let's create a new design initializer for our OW space object class. So let's go to our header file, OWS space object.h. I can add a few returns because we're going to be writing some code here. And what this initializer is going to do is it will take our astronomical data from our astronomical data uh, class that we added earlier and an image and set your planet's properties accordingly. So it'll be very convenient for us. The custom initializer will take two arguments, an NS dictionary of planet data and a UI image holding the planet's image. The key points that each class has one designated initializer and that all other initializers funnel through our one designated initializer. In that designated initializer we call self is equal to super init. So when we write this inside of our designated initializer we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on there. All other initializers need to call the designated initializer. So first, let's go ahead and define our designated initializer inside of our header file. So we can do id init with data and NS dictionary data and image. And we'll pass in a UI image here. And we'll say this variable or parameter name will be image. So what's going on here? Well, we have a return time by id. And we'll talk more about ID in the future, but ID is actually a pointer to an object of any type. So we know we're going to return an object, we just don't know what type of object we're going to be returning yet. But that's okay for now. We're also going to be passing in an NS dictionary, and its variable name will be data. And we're going to be passing in a UI image whose variable name will be image. So just like our MBF dog, we also have to set up some properties for our OWS space object. So there are going to be quite a few of these, but we'll start and we're going to create a property. We can say strong non-atomic. And we first need to give our space object a name. So we're going to make NS string name. And we also want to display all of the information from our astronomical data class. So I'm going to write at property. Non-atomic, and this will be a float, 
and we can say that this will be the gravitational force of our space object. So again, if you're curious as to where all this information is going to be coming from, it'll be coming from our astronomical data class. So take a look at the implementation file if you're interested. We're also going to have a, a diameter of our astronomical object. So let's do float diameter. And we can have a year length. So let's say that this will be a float as well. And let's have a day length. And we'll have a number of moons, or excuse me, a temperature. Let's do temperature first. And now let's do number of moons. So we'll make this an int actually instead of a float. And let's also have a nickname. Ah, we'll make this an object, so it's going to be strong, non-atomic, and a string, nickname. And finally, let's have an interesting fact. We also need to add our image, and I'm going to go ahead and add a, a space here, or return, and this will just help me organize my thoughts because all of this upper data here is coming from my astronomical data class, whereas my image is going to be coming from myself. I'm going to add it inside of my view controller based on all the images I've added to my project earlier. So let's call this UI image. We call this space image. So next, let's go into the OW space object.m file. Oh. And we need to override the current initializer, which we've seen is just init. So we're going to write id init, and we see the autofill, and we're going to add curly braces. And inside of it, we're going to write self is equal to self init with data, and we can pass nil and nil. And ah, make sure to use a lowercase here for nil. Yeah, and there we go. And finally, we need to return something from this method. And that's why we have ID here. We need to return an object so we can return ourself. Now, this syntax looks really funky. But what we're doing here is we're saying that the current object, or self, myself, is equal to self init with data. So we're saying we're going to pass off the initialization uh, process to our new designated initializer, which is the one we declared in our header file. And we're also saying that from this me method, just return myself. So let's go ahead and make this work. So we're going to go ahead and implement our designated initializer. So we can write id init with data. And we'll add our curly braces. And let's go ahead and write some code here. So we're going to write self is equal to super init, which is the required line of code for our designated initializer. And we'll talk about what this means in just a second. Let's finish typing out our uh, method here. So next what we'll do is we'll set up our initializer so that when I create my object, I'll use the data variable name of type NS dictionary and my object will already have the properties required set up for me. So it'll be really helpful. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to import the astronomical data header file. So I'll be able to use the same keys in order to access elements from my data dictionary. And I'll have consistency and I'll be sure that the names are going in there correctly for the keys. So I'm going to import astronomical data.h so I get access to all the defines we created earlier and I can start filling in all of the properties here so first we'll type self.name is equal to data which is the name of my dictionary and we're going to use our new literal syntax which is left bracket planet name and Notice that I have two brackets with the key name, which is planet name, and on my dictionary it will return the correct name for this object.
Next, I'll set up my gravitational force, and we'll set that equal to data planet gravity. Now, there's one problem here, and we can actually get the error here, and it'll say, assigning float from incompatible type ID. And what's happening here, if you remember, we wrapped all of our numbers inside of NS number objects. Well, I need to convert my NS number to a float so that I can properly set up this property. So there's a method we can do, and it's called float value. And we saw this earlier when we were working with our text fields and trying to access text property. So I can also convert NS numbers back to the original form using float value or int value, depending on the type. There's also like bool value for booleans as well. And what's happening here is data is our dictionary. And again, we're keying into our dictionary using the key name planet gravity, which we got from the astronomical data header file. So this is actually equal to, we can actually even hold down the command key and press on planet gravity, and it'll take us to where our define is. So this is actually equal to acceleration of gravity at surface. So I can press the little back button up here to go back, and we now have a return value for this key. Well, we know that's gonna be an NS number, so we actually call the method float value on it. So if I take a look at astronomicaldata.m for just a second, we'll see that my planet's gravity is being set up as an NS number here, like 3.7. So let's go back to OWS space object.m. We have to set up the rest of our properties. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my diameter next. And we can say data. And we'll say planet diameter. And we'll call float value again on this. Next, let's set up the year length. And we'll say data planet year length. And we can call the method float value on that as well. And we can set the day length. Planet day length and say float value. And we can set up the temperature. And we'll find planet temperature, float value. And we'll set up the number of moons. And we'll say planet number of moons, float uh, int value for this one. And we can also set up the nickname. And we'll say data, ah, we don't need the double bracket here. So data planet nickname. And finally, uh, we can set up our interesting fact. Interesting fact. Now, the other thing we want to set up is our initial image. So we're going to type self.space image is equal to image. Notice we're not using our dictionary from this because we're getting our image passed in as a separate argument in our initializer. Finally, I want to return an object from this method because I know that I need to return an object of type ID. And the same way we did in our initializer above, we're just going to return ourself. Now, we had one line of code that I said we'd come back and explain, and that's self is equal to super init. Well, we learned earlier, super refers to the super class, and we know that we're inheriting from NS object. So what's happening here is we're saying, first do the initializer, or the, the code inside of the initializer method, inside of NS object. So it does a bunch of things for us. We're not going to worry too much about this but it helps set up our object so it, it's prepared correctly. And then we add additional code on top of this so that we're able to have our own additional functionality, specifically when we initialize our OWS space object objects, we're able to have our initial property set up so we can immediately start using these objects.